Mary was secretly packing her suitcase to escape from home. Since her father had died one year ago, her mother had been overprotective of her and her younger sister, Ashley. Her obsession was such that they weren't allowed to go to school, leave the house, or interact with anyone. That situation had surpassed the patience of the young woman, who fed up with her mother's abusive attitude, decided to grab some clothes and personal items and leave home to live a free life. Before leaving, she entered her sister's room and asked her to leave with her. But where do you want us to go, Mary? The world out there is dangerous, we must stay with mom. Ashley, we have to escape. Her mother needs psychological help. She doesn't let us do anything. She keeps us locked up at home, turning it into a prison. We must go out into the street, breathe fresh air and interact with other people. But her sister didn't want to leave, nor did she want her to leave her alone. So she began to scream, alerting her mother. Mary had no choice but to leave her there and run before the woman stopped her. Three years had passed, and Mary had decided to return to her mother and sister's home to tell them great news. She arrived without warning and rang the doorbell. When her mother saw her through the glass, she greeted her, confused. She asked for a few minutes and returned a little later with clothes and shoes in her hands. She opened the door and told her that she should have stayed in that room, shower, and put on the clean clothes and shoes that she brought her before entering the house. That room was like a kind of hallway with a small toilet, many disinfectant products, washing machine, a dryer. It looked like the room of a cleaning shop. Mary told her that she was clean, and her clothes were too. But her mother quickly stopped her, telling her that if she wanted to enter her house, she had to follow the rules. She told her that her sister had a serious illness that attacked her immune system, and any bacteria or virus would harm her health. So Mary stopped complaining and accepted her mother's orders. When she finished washing herself, she knocked on the door so that the woman would allow her to enter. The mother opened it and gave her a big hug. She was very happy to see her after so long apart. Then she invited her into the living room where Ashley was studying. When Mary saw her, she couldn't stop herself from putting her hand over her mouth. She was excited to be reunited with her sister, but had been surprised by how bad she looked. She was missing a lot of hair. Her skin was pale and dull, with large, dark circles under her eyes. And she looked weak and wasted. The young women hugged each other, and suddenly the younger sister began to cry and separated. The mother left the room and left them alone. Then, Ashley asked her sister why she had abandoned her and why she had forgotten about her. Mary told her that she had called several times on the phone, but that her mother told her that she couldn't get through. Ashley didn't believe her. She knew her mother would never do something like that. Mary went out to look for her mother. She had returned to tell them great news. She was engaged. She was gonna get married in six months, so she had decided to put all the bad memories aside and return to her family's house to share her joy and introduce them to her future husband. He had delayed the visit for a couple of days because he was a nurse and they had had an emergency at the hospital. Likewise, Mary decided to go first to tell them the news and to stay in a nearby hostel. Both her mother and sister congratulated her. They were happy to meet the man with whom she now shared her life. The mother told her that she wouldn't allow her to stay in a hostel. She would stay there with them. They had lost a lot of time and it was time to make up for it. Mary accepted the invitation. Then there was silence, and her mother reproached her that if she had taken her sister with her that day, she would be dead. Days after her departure, Ashley fell ill and was told she had a very serious immune system disease. She couldn't go out on the street, she couldn't interact with anyone or even eat anything. It had to be ecological and very well disinfected. Any bacteria or virus that entered that house could trigger greater severity of her symptoms. Mary reacted with surprise. Are you telling me that Ashley hasn't been outside for a single day in three years? She needs to breathe fresh air, mom! The situation became tense and they began to argue. Then the mother got up and returned shortly after with two cups of tea. Let's leave it, Mary. I've prepared a warm infusion for you and we're going to start again. You should know that everything I'm doing is for the good health of your sister. Mary nodded. She didn't want to leave there angry again. She had planned to spend a few happy days with her family. 
The two sisters went to Ashley's room to chat. Mary told her what her life had been like in recent years, what she had achieved, where she worked, what her boyfriend was like. Ashley listened attentively. From time to time, the sister named words that she didn't know. Don't you know what WhatsApp is? Have you never heard of it, not even on television? Mom says it's better not to watch television, much less use the internet. There are many people there who could harm me. The situation was more worrying than Ashley imagined. Her sister had no contact with the outside world, she lived inside a bubble. Mary gave her her cell phone and let her see several photos, while she braided her sister's hair. As she did so, she noticed that several strands were falling out and that she had many bald spots. Suddenly, the sister began to wither in pain. She clutched her stomach and she screamed. The mother ran into the room and when she saw Ashley's cell phone, she screamed hysterically. How could you be so foolish to leave her the cell phone? It's full of bacteria. Your sister is worse because of you. Now I will have to disinfect the whole house again. Mary disagreed. Her cell phone was perfectly clean. Mom, I have read on the internet about her illness and they say that it is good for her to go outside. Nothing will happen to her. The mother shouted at her and asked her to leave that room immediately. Her daughter could not leave the house and those comments only confused her more. The young woman with tears in her eyes grabbed her cell phone and went to her room. There, she called her boyfriend to tell him what had happened. About Ashley's hair and pain, never going outside. The nurse told her that not leaving the house was counterproductive, but he would ask his fellow doctors about those symptoms. The fact that her sister's hair was falling out like that could be indicated in some other illness. And since her mother didn't want to take her to the doctor, her health could be worsening. The mother was on the other side of the door, listening to the private conversation between Mary and her boyfriend. Then she entered and asked her to give her the phone, because if she didn't, she would have to leave there. She also forbade her from telling anything about their life to strangers. He is not a stranger, mom. He's my future husband. And he's a nurse. He thinks Ashley should go to the doctor and get out. The mother hugged her and asked her to stop arguing. She would prepare a hot infusion for the two of them and they would entertain themselves with a board game while her sister rested. A little later, Mary began to feel dizzy and had a bad headache. The mother placed her hand on her forehead, which was very hot. Oh, Mary, you have a fever. Come on, you should lie down in bed and rest. Mommy will take care of you like before. You now relax. In, in a few hours, I will return with another infusion that will help you recover. The next day, after breakfast, the two sisters enjoyed the morning together in Ashley's room. They talked about fashion and beauty and Ashley asked her sister to do her makeup. Mary told her that this would make her mother angry, and her sister replied that she was tired of not doing things, that they would do them in secret. When she saw herself in the mirror, she didn't recognize herself. Mary had covered her dark, pronounced circles under her eyes and given a healthy color to her skin with blush. She didn't look sick. It was the most beautiful time she had ever felt. A few minutes later, Mary began to feel lightheaded again, and Ashley screamed that she had a lot of pain in her tummy. The older sister, scared, gave her one of the pills she took when her stomach hurt. The mother entered the room, and upon seeing her daughter wearing makeup, she began to yell at Mary, telling her that she had once again aggravated her sister's symptoms. Ashley told her that she had taken a pill, and then the mother grabbed her daughter's arm tightly and took her to the toilet to vomit. She forced her to gug until she completely expelled that chemical from her body. Afterwards, she forbade Mary from ever being alone with Ashley again. Ashley asked her mother to allow her sister to go to the doctor. Her pill was in the cause of her pain. But suddenly, her vision blurred and everything went black. When she opened her eyes, she was in her bed. Her mother stroked her hair while giving her a cup of hot tea to help her recover. She had fainted and she didn't understand why. Her mother told her that she had found her very nervous. Perhaps it was stress. She advised her to rest to recover. And after drinking the infusion, Mary fell asleep again. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. The mother approached the door and saw a young man outside waiting. She looked out the glass and asked him who he was, and he replied that he was Mary's fiancé. 
The mother smiled and told him that she would bring him clean clothes and shoes. He should shower before entering. He was only asking about his girlfriend, but the mother left him alone, so he had no choice but to follow her cleaning and disinfection instructions before entering. When he was ready, he told her that he wanted to know if Mary was there. She hadn't answered the phone for days. Every time the operator said that the cell phone was turned off and he was worried. Oh yeah, yeah, she's here. She's resting right now. I'll make you some tea and give you something to eat while you wait for her to come down. The nurse appreciated the gesture and sat at the table in the room to wait. A little later, the mother arrived with tea and cookies and sat down in front of him. She told him that Mary was in the bathroom, so she would be with them soon. The man began to eat homemade cookies and praised the mother's cooking skills. Suddenly, he noticed that he was choking and drank the entire infusion at once. But it wasn't choking food. He was drowning, he couldn't breathe. The mother watched seriously and without moving as the man writhed on the ground, unable to speak. Raising his hand and asking for help, shortly after, he stopped kicking. The mother grabbed him by his feet and dragged him to her greenhouse, which in addition to vegetables and flowers, also had several poisonous plants. She left him in a room she had with garden and tools, threw a piece of plastic over the body, and returned inside the house to make sure their daughters were still asleep. Seeing that everything was in order, she began to clean. Mary woke up the next morning, having slept at least 12 hours, but still feeling tired and weak. She grabbed the cup of infusion that had been left on the table to take it down to the kitchen, and when she turned around and saw her pillow, it fell to the floor. There were several strands of hair on the bed. Bald spots were forming. She looked back at the ground and looked at the broken cup. The bottom had a white substance and smelled very strange. Her mother was poisoning them and she was making her sick like her sister. Ashley had nothing. It was her mother who was intentionally keeping her sick so she wouldn't leave there. She quickly went to her sister's room and told her that they had to leave. She told her what her mother was doing, but Ashley didn't believe her. Stop telling lies, Mary. You know I can't leave the house. The viruses would kill me. At that moment, the mother came into the room and yelled at Mary to leave her sister alone. Without a second's hesitation, Mary slid the curtains to the side and opened the window wide, letting the air from outside enter the interior of the house. Ashley began to scream, covering her nose and mouth to keep the contaminated air from entering her body. The mother longed at Mary, screaming that she was trying to kill her sister. I'm not killing her, mother. You are poisoning her. I know everything. I plan to report to you. The woman wasn't going to give up so soon, and she squeezed her daughter's neck tightly. Maddie couldn't breathe. She was drowning. She extended her fingertips as far as she could until she reached a vase in Ashley's cabinet and hid her mother's head hard, leaving her on the floor. The young woman ran out ready to leave in her car when something made her stop. Mike's car, her partner, was parked in front of the house. Where was he? She returned to the house and searched without finding anything. Then she decided to look for him in her mother's best hiding place, the greenhouse. She walked in and looked at all the plants the woman had been poisoning her and Ashley with. Soon she saw the little room where she kept the gardening tools. Upon entering, she noticed a lump covered with plastic. She didn't want to pick it up because a feeling told her that she already knew what she was going to find. But she had no choice. When she discovered it, her legs gave out and she fell to the ground. There was the body of her future husband, the only family she still had left. The mother recovered from the blow and left the house astray to the greenhouse. Ashley was watching everything through a window pane. If she didn't do anything, her mother would kill her sister. That woman was not the sweet mother she thought she was. Mary was right. She went down to the kitchen, grabbed a knife, and gathered the courage to go outside. She remained motionless for a few seconds. What if her mother was right and going out into the street could kill her? She shook her head and thought that if that was the case, her death would have been worth it if she could save her sister. She walked under the sun and entered the greenhouse. 
There, her mother squeezed Mary's neck tightly, trying to suffocate her. Ashley yelled for her to stop immediately, but her mother didn't obey. Then the young woman put the knife to her neck, threatening to cut herself. No, don't do it, my sweet girl. I have always taken care of you. I have wanted the best for you. If you want what's best for me, let go of Mary and let us get out of here. Otherwise, I'll do it. The mother obeyed and released the young woman, who quickly rushed to hug her sister. Then the two ran to Mary's car and drove away from the house. They hadn't even gone three kilometers when the mother caught up with them on the road with her car. On one of the curves, she overtook them, got right in front of their car and slammed on the brakes, making Mary unable to react and causing them to have an accident. The sisters were left dazed and with several cuts to their eyebrows and lips. They closed their eyes and shortly after, they noticed someone dragging them along the ground. Their mother took them out of the cursed car and took them to a field next to the road. She placed a flower from her greenhouse in each of the young women's mouths and joined their hands. Afterwards, she herself ingested the same plant and hugged them, waiting for eternal sleep. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!